Hi, I'm Donna Jordan from Jordan Fabrics. Today we're going to be making a churn dash quilt. Now this is a traditional patchwork block and there's a lot of different methods for making the churn dash block. I've got an old book here. This is from 1962. It's got a lot of different blocks and here's the churn dash pattern. Now the method shown here would have you make cardboard templates, draw around the cardboard onto some fabric, cut out the pieces with scissors, because this book was written before we even had rotary cutters. Now, I don't want to use that method because it's going to be pretty slow. So I've come up with a pattern where we can use half square triangles and strip units for these parts here, and it'll be a lot more fun, take a lot less time. Now, this pattern is going to use fat quarters, and it's a free pattern. So we have a link right below the video that says free pattern and it comes in multiple sizes but because the blocks are all made the same way it's very easy to make the pattern in bigger or smaller sizes so i'm going to use 12 fat quarters for the size quilt i'm making and every fat quarter is going to get cut exactly the same way some two inch strips some three and seven eighths inch squares and some three and a half inch squares now i'm going to work with two fat quarters at a time because each block only has two prints in it. So I'm gonna select two that have a little bit of contrast. It's always a good idea to steam press your fabrics before you cut them so that everything you cut will be nice and accurate. Now I'm going to put my two fat quarters right sides together because then when I make my strip units, they're already going to be facing the right way. And That'll save me a little bit of time. Now that we have all the pieces cut, we're going to work with these three and seven eighths inch squares, and they're going to get made into half square triangles. So I'm going to mark the back side. I'm going to use a pencil. I think you can see that there. And I'm just going to draw a diagonal line from corner to corner across the back side of all of these. To make the half square triangles, we're going to take these two squares, they're already right sides together, and we are going to sew one quarter inch away from that drawn line down the one side, flip it around, and then go down the other side. Now we need to cut this right along that drawn line, and I'm going to use my blade here. Now we just need to open these up carefully so that our seam will stay nice and straight. Iron it with a little steam and trim off the dog ears. Now we're going to sew the strips together. So these are already right sides together here. And we're just going to sew on one edge quarter inch, very careful quarter inch away from one side there. Now we want to finger press the seam allowance to one side. So I'm just going to open it up a little and draw my finger or my fingernail right down that seam. Now it doesn't really matter on these two which way the seam allowance is facing because they're both dark. But if you have a dark and a light, press the seam towards the dark fabric. Even though we finger pressed, I'm still going to want to iron these. So I'm gonna smooth it out, make sure it looks straight. Give it a little steam. Now these strip units are all going to get cut into three and a half inch segments and you can cut several of them at the same time. So I'm gonna put them on my cutting board and I'm staggering them a little bit so that the seam allowances don't all end up in one stack because that makes it hard to cut. You can even move this all the way up here and cut them individually at the same time though. So I'm gonna make one first cut here to get those uneven edges out of the way. Then I'm going to measure over three and a half inches So now I've got all four of these cut at once, and I'm going to make four of those cuts here. So 
here's what we need for our blocks and this is leftover but we're going to save this so we're going to set it aside and use it later so here's what we need for the first block we've got the three and a half inch square that we cut earlier that's going to go in the middle we're going to put four of these half square triangles around the outside so if we've got dark in the middle we're going to have dark on the outside then we've got four of these blocks again dark on the outside and these fit right here so it's just a nine patch block that we can sew together very easily so we're going to put these like this and i'm going to sew down here and leave it on the machine Now all we have to do is open this up and add this last row. So this one will get flipped over. Now for the direction of the seam allowances, if you've got dark in the middle, you want the seam allowances to go towards the dark. So this middle row, both seam allowances are going towards the middle. Now the top and bottom row, they're going to go away from the middle. So I'm, I'm finger pressing to keep them in place right now so that I can sew the rows together. So now my seam allowances are going in opposite directions and it's gonna be real easy to match them up and sew the row together. Now for these seams also, we want to go towards the dark center. So I'm gonna press this towards the center. Then when I make the block that's the opposite color, which is this one, I'm again going to press the seam allowances towards the dark. That means they're going the opposite direction from these blocks here. And that's good because then when we end up sewing the whole quilt together, where we're alternating dark and light, these seam allowances will also be going on opposite directions and it'll make it real easy to put the whole quilt top together. I went ahead and paired up all the quarters, cut the blocks, got them all stitched up. Now I'm ready to lay it out. There, the whole quilt is laid out and it's alternating light, dark, light, dark with the background of the blocks and that's going to make it real easy to sew the rows together because the seams will be going in opposite directions where we meet here. So I'm going to put everything into rows, put the rows together, get some borders on it, and then get it onto the quilting machine. So I've got all the patchwork stitched together and one little border all the way around. Now remember these extra pieces we had when we were doing our strip units. I'm going to take all of these and sew them side by side into one really long piece. And then I'm gonna cut that into two inch strips. And I'm gonna use that for part of the border that's gonna go next onto the quilt. I've got all the borders on and I've got it loaded up onto the machine. Now we need to pick a thread color. Really any of these thread colors will work, but I think I'm gonna go with this brownish rust color. It's not too dark. So it's not going to show up too much in the light areas, but it's going to blend in very nicely in all of these dark areas. For the quilting pattern, I'm going to use chestnut swirls. It's just got those nice gentle curves, but there's no flowers or anything. And this won't fight with all that nice geometric pattern we've got going in the churn dash blocks. I'm really happy with how the quilt turned out. I like the strength of each block. I like the dark light. It makes each block just pop. So we've got almost solid darks and very light lights that don't have a lot of print and that makes each churn dash show up really well. Now the quilting thread is darker than I normally use, but it looks like it goes right into these light patterns. So it doesn't fight with the pattern at all. 
Now on the back side, I don't know if you can see how small the quilting is. I like a small quilting pattern when I have geometric, traditional, old fashioned looking prints, which is what we've got here. It turned out about 46 by 66 inches. So the patchwork, 36 by 54, and then we added these borders. Now, if you don't want to do the patchwork border, you can just do a plain border like this all the way around. All I did was take that little bit of extra patchwork, put a little bit of border on each end, center it up, and stitch it on, and it was really easy. Thanks for watching our tutorial today on how to make the churn dash quilt. We hope you enjoyed it. Now we're going to have another giveaway. This is a quilt called Fast Lane. It was fast to make. I used layer cake squares to make it. It's a great big quilt. So there's the whole quilt spread out. Now it's very easy to enter the giveaways. Just go to the link below that says giveaway and put in your email address and your name. Good luck. Now, if you like our videos and you want to support us, the best thing you can do is subscribe to our YouTube channel. That would really help us out. Happy quilting.